we've seen two examples of dramatically exothermic reactions, namely the thermite reaction and the reaction of carbon dioxide with elemental magnesium. However, we've now gotten to the point of realizing that spontaneity for a chemical process is not dictated by enthalpy, but rather by free energy, suggesting that we should be able to find spontaneous processes where increases in entropy may outweigh decreases in enthalpy, so that a reaction may proceed even though it is formally endothermic. I'd like to demonstrate one example of such a reaction. I'm going to put a small puddle of water on this wooden block. And then place this glass flask on the puddle. Next, I'm going to add some solid strontium hydroxide octahydrate. And then, some ammonium nitrate. When these two solids are mixed physically by stirring, a reaction takes place that liberates the waters of crystallization that are included in the solid strontium hydroxide octahydrate, leading to a slurry of liquid water, dissolved ammonia, and strontium nitrate. The liberation of water dramatically increases the entropy of the system, which drives the reaction, even though the enthalpy change is actually very unfavorable. That is, the reaction is very endothermic. How do we know it's endothermic? Well, let's see. As I'm stirring, the solids are becoming a bit wet, and I can smell liberated ammonia. That escape of ammonia as a gas also dramatically increases the entropy of the process. And now I have a fairly complete reaction. And if I lift the flask from the block, whoops, I can't lift the flask from the block. The reaction is so endothermic that it has taken heat from the puddle of water freezing it to ice that now bonds the flask to the block. And indeed, I can feel the cold through my gloves. Now, having demonstrated an endothermic process, I can't resist doing one last exothermic demonstration. In this test tube, I have some solid potassium chlorate, a strong oxidizing agent. And here, I have a gummy bear, a piece of candy that is essentially a mixture of sugar, starch, and gelatin. All of these are organic compounds that can be burned exothermically by a strong oxidizing agent. To make things more interesting, let's heat the potassium chlorate with this torch until it liquefies. There. Now, with the help of some tongs, we're going to ask our gummy bear to make a sacrifice for the good of science. Wow! Did you see that? The gummy bear was spontaneously immolated with the generation of a good bit of light and noise. <laughs> now you know why you can get so much energy from the controlled burning of sugars that your body undertakes as part of normal metabolism. It was nice of the gummy bear to dedicate himself to expanding our knowledge. Don't you think? <laughs>